Good evening. Buenas noches. <laughs> it is such a pleasure to be here with all of you. All of you. <laughs> um, in rural and indigenous communities throughout the world, youth have been central actors of development. <laughs> youth catalyze change and promote the development and transformation of communities and societies. The Hunger Project has put communities and youth at the center of development. Throughout the world, communities and their youth are being empowered to shape and lead their own development. Youth have been active participants in the definition of their community's visions, in the implementation of projects, in advocacy actions, and even in participatory monitoring and evaluation. In Mexico, we've witnessed how transformative and unique this approach is. Throughout the country, youth are signing up to be what we call catalysts, highly trained and committed volunteers who move their fellow community members forward into action. They're heading community committees. They are participating in the construction of stoves, ecological bathrooms, and entire houses. And they're even engaging with local governments to advance their community's visions. In the last three years that I have been a part of the Hunger Project family, I've had the opportunity to witness this firsthand. Youth are present everywhere, challenging social norms and catalyzing change in their communities. I've witnessed stories of transformation, both at the personal level and the community level, and tonight I want to share one of them. This story takes us to the southern state of Chiapas, where young indigenous women, like a woman called Martiviana, got together and decided to build ecological bathrooms. And through this one action, transformed gender norms. In 2013, women in this region from all generations gathered and identified sanitation as a community priority. Lack of adequate sanitation had led to a high risk of infectious diseases that resulted in malnutrition, and it had become an obstacle to their dignity, safety, and well-being. Martiviana, a young indigenous woman, shared with us how uncomfortable it was. Due to deforestation, there were no trees to hide behind. The place they had been assigned to, Baith, was very small, and it definitely wasn't safe. They were often at risk of being harassed or attacked. They had to shower quickly to avoid being seen. So Martiviana and other young women in the community decided that bathrooms would make all the difference. They decided to lead the project designing and constructing the bathrooms. They spent several days outside of their communities learning about sustainable construction, masonry, carpentry. They became builders in a region where only men are thought to be able to engage in those activities. <laughs> Yet these young women planned and administered the entire project. And they built the bathroom of their dreams. It was beautiful, big, and environmentally friendly. <laughs> this process wasn't easy. According to Martiniana, doing this work challenged traditional gender norms. It was not common for women in rural and indigenous communities to leave their houses to go to work. So they had to up continually inform their parents as to where they were, what they were doing, what they were working on. 
it was also very difficult to balance the project with household chores, but they were unstoppable. Their construction of the bathrooms not only advanced the vision of their communities, but challenged patriarchy and promoted gender equality. Martiriana was empowered in the process. She said, being a catalyst is a lot of fun. <laughs> she said, I used to be quiet. Now I talk, and I talk a lot. <laughs> I even do things I did not imagine I could do. I still have fear and embarrassment, but now I can control them. They do not limit me anymore. <laughs> Through our advocacy work, rural and indigenous young people, like Martidiana, have also started shaping policies in Mexico. With the Hunger Project support, they're raising their voices to their governments, and they're advocating for gender-focused community-led development and youth-led development. They're participating in high-level dialogues with local governments, with the Senate, and with various ministries. Young women and men are working with us to develop policy recommendations and agendas related to family farming, natural resource governance, gender, and climate change. Because who else knows better about rural development than communities themselves? Who is more invested in the community's future than youth? I must say that partnering with young women like Martidiana has shaped and empowered me. Every day they challenge prevailing beliefs and norms by demonstrating how committed they are to their community's development and to a just and thriving society. As a young woman, I have learned firsthand how the Hunger Project's approach to youth empowerment can transform lives. Our principle of transformative leadership has challenged me to speak out, has shaped me and my vision of the world, and allowed me to be the leader I need to be for the end of hunger. Because once you believe that the end of hunger is possible, and that you, no matter what age, have a unique role in achieving this mission, once you know that, then you are unstoppable. <laughs>